2020 NHL Draft over yet? The answer is yes, finally, after about 11 hours of coverage. <laughs> it's true, the first round was about three hours, actually a little bit more, and then rounds two through seven took from 11.30 Eastern till seven o'clock! And somehow the Leafs managed to make more than one pick per hour. So let's take a look at the dozen draft picks that the Toronto Maple Leafs made in the 2020 NHL Draft and look at how the team did. First with the 15th overall pick, the Toronto Maple Leafs select Rodion Amirov. Now if you're looking for a full and thorough breakdown of him, I'm not going to do it in this video because I already did it in my last video on this channel. It was over 10 minutes on one guy. The long and short of it, I'm excited for this pick. I think he could be good. I think the reaction to him was misguided. They need to get bigger. They need to get tougher. They need better defense. I'm on board with that. I agree with that 100%, but they weren't going to fix their current defensive situation, their current size or toughness situation with the 15th overall pick this year. Well, they could have got Gooley. Listen, Gooley might end up being the better player, but he wasn't going to step into the Leafs lineup this year and make an impact. Heck, there isn't even a date for this year yet, this season. We don't know when it's going to begin. Amirov is represented by agent Dan Milstein, who I actually got to interview last year on the radio on Sportsnet 590 The Fan. He also represents Ilya Mikheyev. He spoke very highly of Mikheyev at the time, and he was right about him. He said Amirov has the potential to be the next Nikita Kucherov. I thought that was a little aggressive. Uh, if he is, that's mint. And the last thing I'll say about him, he only had two points in 21 games in the KHL. That is barely half the truth. Rodion Amirov played games in three different hockey leagues last season, not just the KHL. He also played in two tournaments, so to only look at those 21 games is ridiculous. The key is he was playing in the Continental Hockey League as a teenager, which is very difficult to do, and when he was sent back down to the Russian juniors in the MHL, he lit it up. Again, if you want my full breakdown on the Amirov pick, it's my most recent video on this channel before this one. So that was Rodion Amirov. As for the Next 11 picks, I think this series of James Myrtle tweets sums it up perfectly. The Leafs' first nine picks are listed at an average of 164.9 pounds. Jeez, James, you couldn't have rounded it up. The Leafs' final pick of the draft, Wyatt Shingoth, is listed at 200 pounds. He's the first of 11 picks to hit that mark. Second heaviest, Rodion Amirov at 177 pounds, according to the NHL. Now, once again, supposedly Dan Milstein, Rodion Amirov's agent, says that he's closer to 185. It's difficult to know, especially when he's overseas and you know, there's a pandemic. But what makes those two Myrtle tweets hilarious is the next one because the Leafs actually made another pick because they made a trade with Boston. The Leafs traded a pick next year in order to get an extra seventh rounder in this draft, prompting this gem from Down Goes Brown. The Leafs finally find a way to take a seventh from the Bruins. <laughs> Anyway, where was I? Oh yeah, James Myrtle talking about how all the Leafs draft picks are small. Oh wait, they got another draft pick. What did they do with it? The Leafs take Ryan Verberg with their final pick, local kid, he's from Richmond Hill, 5'10", 168 pound center from the OJHL, that's Junior A. And of course, the first comment underneath at EliteProspects.com lists him at 174 pounds. It's a different of six, who cares? Kyle Dubas, man, when you got a brand, you, you stick to it, you lean into it. So. Basically, with the Leafs draft this year, it was a lot more small, skilled players. They got a mixture of guys, they got wingers, centers, they did get some defensemen, they got actually a pretty highly touted goalie who was one of the biggest guys they drafted, but the point is small, skilled players again. Before we get to the players individually, I want to talk about that theme as a whole. Kyle Dubas has repeatedly, over the past week or so, talked about the desire to get tougher, get harder to play against as a team, and I believe him. After all, according to The Athletic, he offered Kyle Clifford a three-year deal at over a million dollars per, and repeatedly from insiders, I believe Elliot Friedman has said it a bunch of times, he thinks that Dubas is going to surprise us in free agency with how he's going to address the team's toughness issue, if you will, making them harder to play against. So I believe him, and he was never going to fix the team's problem now by drafting some guy in the sixth round. Here's a question that I would ask that I'm sure a lot of you are asking as well. 
Can't you address this issue for your entire organization for the future by drafting for it? I think people are getting too caught up in the weight thing. Th these are 18 year olds, guys. They're going to weigh more in a few years. Trust me. Whether it's muscle or fat, it's one of the guarantees in life. But the height thing? Unless these guys are an outlier, they're not going to grow more than an inch or two over the next ever. And I think that's a legit question and I think it's a legit concern. Now, would I like the Leafs to go out and get a guy like Patrick Maroon right now? Of course I would. Back-to-back -back cups, great role player. They call him Big Rig. He is the definition of hard to play against. But as I was watching the Stanley Cup final, you know who else looked hard to play against? Yanni Gord. I mean, Victor Hedman was obviously hard to play against. Ryan McDonough was hard to play against, but it's difficult to get those guys in the fifth, sixth, seventh round. I mean, the only way the Leafs are going to get a guy like Victor Hedman is to go back in time 11 years and have the second overall pick. But Nikita Kucherov, Andre Palat, Braden Point, all those guys are hard to play against because they're extremely good. Yanni Gord is annoying and makes you work every single ship. Nikita Kucherov is greasy. Braden Point, borderline unstoppable. Being hard to play against is not a size thing, it's a mindset thing. Frederick Goche is just as big, I think he's actually bigger in both height and weight than Patrick Maroon. He ain't hard to play against. So did the Leafs address that need as an organization with the 12 picks they made? I guess we'll see. It's a maturity thing. It's got to be a scouting thing that we wouldn't really be able to pick up on with just a few clips. I doubt these guys as 18 year olds are going to be the same people mentally when they hit 24, but they better be harder to play against. Elliot Friedman had a hilarious line on Tim and Sid yesterday after the draft. He said he had a friend text him looking at Kyle Dubas's picks going, is he doing this on purpose? Like, is he reading Twitter and just making these picks to spite us? I was starting to think so too. The guy is hilariously on brand. Dubas traded down in the second round. He got small guys a Again. The only thing missing is I didn't see anyone drafted from the Sioux. Kyle Dubas and his crew know what they believe in. They know what they think will make this hockey team better in the future. I just hope they're right. As long as you don't get it confused with what he thinks is going to make the team better in the future and what the Leafs need now. I think they're two totally different things. One last thing before the individual players. The other theme was a ton of European players and people thinking this year more than others it was on purpose. The world is a mess right now. A lot of developmental leagues, uh, the OHL and the WHL, they're not even playing games right now. The QMJHL is, however they had a team come down with 18 cases of COVID. But right now, a lot of the European leagues, they are playing games right now. In fact, one of the Leafs draft picks was drafted mid-game yesterday, and he found out on the Jumbotron, which kind of seems mean. It's still a contact sport. You're trying to win the game, and you're trying to focus, and you look up, and you go, what? Thank you. That's what I needed before my next shift. Life-altering information. I appreciate that. But I mentioned this in my Amirov video. What's unique about this year's draft is you get to cheat a little bit in your scouting. With a guy like Mirov, for example, you can look at his numbers from last year and then pick him in June and make a bet that he's going to be better next hockey season. This year, because the draft is in October and Amirov is already a month into his current season in the KHL, you can see that, yeah, he is taking leaps instead of two points in 21 games. He's actually got five in 10 so far. So I wouldn't necessarily say that Dubas or any other team drafted Europeans as a strategy. I think they just did it because a lot of European players had a competitive advantage this year. The guys who were going to go top 15 first round were always going to go roughly in that range, but everyone in the middle of the draft it's jump ball. Now, let's look at who the Leafs drafted with the rest of their picks. The Leafs second pick, 44th overall, they actually traded to Ottawa in exchange for the 59th and 64th pick. So they move back, but they get two picks pretty close together. With the 59th overall pick, the Leafs select Ronnie Hirvonen, a center from Asat in Finland in the Liga. Yes, he's listed as 5'9", 164 pounds, but he's playing against men in Finland, which is difficult to do. He was the player I spoke about who was actually drafted mid-game. He was drafted Drafted in the third period, that's so mean. You could say the Leafs need more defense throughout the organization, and I would definitely agree with you, but they do lack a little bit of center depth, especially in the junior and AHL ranks, so that's a good pick. He's described as a player with a high hockey IQ, and he was a monster at the U18s for Finland with 12 points in nine games. Only a few picks later, at 64th overall, the Leafs get Topi Niemela, a defenseman. He's currently listed at six feet tall, 163 pounds, but like I said earlier, I would focus 
a lot more on the six foot frame than the 163 pounds he's 18 he'll grow. And I will answer the question, the only thing that Leafs fans are more desperate for than a defenseman with size. He shoots right! Another player who is just described as really smart, and I feel like this is what the Leafs are going for. Skills you can develop, the body you can work on, understanding the game, it's difficult to teach. He played 43 games in Finland's top league last season, had seven points. This year, he's in Finland's junior tier, but he's got four points in four games. In the fourth round, 106 overall, the Leafs get Arter Akimov, a goalie. And I really gotta say, I know some people are like, oh, they didn't get enough Canadians. Okay, fine, what? Whatever. If you're drafting a goaltender these days, Russian is the way to go. Look at the Rangers, look at the Islanders, look at the Capitals, uh, look at who the Tampa Bay Lightning just won the Stanley Cup with. Russia's the new goalie factory. It seems to go in trends. It was Canada, it was Finland, now it's Russia. Elite Prospects has him ranked as six foot two, 170 pounds. You might not like that frame on a defenseman, but that is how goalies are built. Tall bone racks. Two seasons ago, he had a 921 save percentage in the MHL. Last season, he was a 931. So far this season, he's played seven games, three in the MHL, basically KHL juniors, and VHL, which is basically KHL minors. He's played four games. Not that you can take that much from that sample size, but a 926 so far in the MHL, a 957 in the VHL. This guy looks pretty good. I'm excited for him to make it to the actual KHL and play with Akbar's Kazan because they've made some pretty good goalies in the past. The Leafs' second fourth rounder, 122nd overall, was used on QMJHL defenseman William Villeneuve. One of the more compelling picks they made, a, a lot of the draft nerds were super high on this. Once upon a time, this guy was the second overall pick in the QMJHL draft. First season in the QMJHL, high expectations, and he fell short, probably hurting his draft stock. But this past season, as mostly a 17-year-old in the QMJHL, Amazing. I spoke to Aiden Northcutt, the Charlottetown Islanders communications director, and here's what he had to say. Little small, but plays with a chip on his shoulder. Extremely offensive minded, as the point total suggests. Really good puck distributor. I also spoke with Kevin Papetti over at Maple Leaf Hot Stove, and this is music to Leaf fans' ears! Villeneuve is a right D! Hooray! More offensive. Still needs to get stronger, but not short. Good puck mover. Plays with Poirier who went in the third round this year. Led his team in scoring last year, but big skating concerns. Hopefully Barb Underhill can help. That last part's a little concerning. We talk about skills that are kind of hard to learn. Uh, skating. Yes, Barb Underhill is a miracle worker when it comes to that, but how readily available is she going to be on account of, you know, pandemic? Now, fifth round, 137th overall, the Leafs draft Dmitry Ovchinnikov, which for mental reasons, I'm just gonna imagine you said Ovechkin, and I'm very happy. Now, for anyone who was having difficulty finding a stats page, I found most places had his first name, Dimitri, spelled with a Y at the end. EliteProspects.com has it spelled with an I. He's a forward, only had a cup of coffee in the KHL with two games last year, but 55 points in 54 games in the MHL against his peers. This season so far, seven games in the MHL, 10 points, and he's already played more games in the KHL, playing three with Sabir Novosibirsk. Once again, a guy like Evchinikov, uh, this isn't a criticism. I love HockeyDB.com. I go on that site every single day but they just don't list MHL stats, which are so important for the draft because a lot of the players, almost all the players drafted out of Russia, that's where they play. Like for example, Avchinikov's HockeyDB page has five games on it, two from last year and three from this year because that's all he's played in the KHL. So you might look at that and come away with, not only does he not score, but he doesn't play. When the reality is he plays a lot and scores a lot. Now in the sixth round, the Leafs had a lot of depth picks, 168th overall, once again, dipping into the Finland pool, Vidi Mietnin, 5'9", 150. 59 pounds. Glad you asked. Last year in Finnish juniors, he had 73 points, 42 of which were goals in 52 games. Actually, this season, he's committed to St. Cloud University in the NCAA. From Kevin Papetti, Mietnin's a weird one. Smaller winger, just a week younger than Nick Robertson. He just dominated Finland's junior league, and I believe he only didn't play pro because he's going to the NCAA. He scored at the Halinka under 18. Physical tools aren't great, but he's been a top player against his own age group and there's clearly some skill there. Expected him to be a late third or fourth rounder. Big shooter. Shoots often and it's a good shot. Just not going to win a ton of battles. He needs to score to be successful. At this stage you are basically taking lottery tickets. That's actually some pretty interesting insight there. He might not have gone to Finland's top league because he can't because he's trying to go to the NCAA. Still in the sixth round, 177th overall, Axel Rendell. He's 5'11", which sounds short, but in hockey these days it's just average. Played a cup of coffee in the SM Liga, but here's the important part, shoots right! A few picks later, 6th round, 180th overall.
overall the Leafs select Joe Miller, not a made-up name. Once again, HockeyDB doesn't have any stats for him last year. Put up 59 points in 25 games, including 25 goals in Minnesota High School. He's committed to play with the Chicago Steel of the USHL. Great program this season. And then the University of Minnesota the following season, but... Again, COVID. 7th round, 189th overall, John Fusco. A 5'11 defenseman, shoots right and should be playing at Harvard right now, but COVID. 7th round, 195th, Wyatt Shingoth. A forward, 5'10, but 200 plus pounds. He's a meaty one. 38 points, 17 of which are goals in 47 games in the USHL with the Waterloo Blackhawks. Hockey DB does have that because they have USHL stats. And with the Leafs' last draft pick, one of the final draft picks of the draft, and a player that the Leafs wanted badly enough that they were willing to trade a draft pick to Boston in order to make this pick. 213th overall, Ryan Zverberg. A right shooting center from the OJHL with the Toronto Junior Canadians. Good program. 26 goals, 25 assists, 51 points in 47 games. So with 12 picks, including 6 in the 6th and 7th round combined, uh, the Leafs are obviously going for lottery tickets here. It's actually kind of a smart strategy. If you miss on a 6th rounder, no one cares. And if you hit, you look like a genius. And the best way to look like a genius is to have a lot of them. But the Leafs with good variety here, at least in terms of positions, wingers, centers, defenders, a goalie. But staying true to their identity, we want smart hockey players. Now, how does Kyle Dubas improve the Leafs now? I guess we're going to find out over the next week or two. I have a bad feeling Friday's not going to be that busy because we saw how jammed up the draft got because of COVID and everyone using Zoom and everything. I, I don't think this is going to be a one-day thing. It's going to take a while. So that is it for this one. Thank you very much for watching. Click like if you like this video. Click subscribe if you really liked it. Tell all your friends. Hopefully next year's draft will be a little, a little shorter.